Achievers to your East Achievers Game Podcast for the week of May 12th, 2023. I'm, of course, Elijah. And this is the Easy Achievers Game Podcast. We come to you every single Friday for news, gaming news, analysis, discussions. Remember, you're a part of the show as well. Comment below, tweet at me, etc. And we can discuss things. I always love bringing questions on into the show, especially comments and these things. And you're always welcome to. Leave a comment, tweet at me. I'm an open book. Everything we say today is a dialogue. Let's get into the show. Not so rapid fire. Dragon Ball Fighters and Dragon Ball Xenoverse have sold 10 million units each. Xenoverse has been out for seven years, Fighter Z after five years. It's, it's almost surprising because although they're two very different games, they're off the same IP and they're both consistently selling more and more as their time to go on, which is good for them. It's fascinating that you, you, on paper you would think this is impossible as it, the the player base would almost be split up and of course they can buy more than one game. And like I said, these are two vastly different games with how they handle um, the gameplay and all that. But I wanted to bring that up as it is fascinating that two that come out around pretty much almost the exact same time, uh, only about two years apart, have both done very well over the course of their time being out. And Xenoverse still releasing DLC to this day. They just added um, content from the movie uh, Superhero, I believe is what it's called. And they added uh, specific things from the ending of that movie, which I still need to see. I'm big. I love Dragon Ball Z. I love, love this since I was a kid. I fell off um, a little bit of the Super Train. I watched a good bit of it. Um, not really a good bit. I watched, like I feel like, the first season or two. I just need to get back to it. I watched all the movies, but like then they redid it with Super, and I need to watch that stuff. Some even more shocking news surrounding Dragon Age Dreadwolf, aside from the leaked gameplay footage we saw a few weeks ago, is from a company listing of expected projects in the fiscal year of 2024. Um, they showed several titles. One of the obvious ones that were not listed on this listing was Dragon Age of Dreadwolf, which means the game will not be due out before April of 2024. The games listed in the lineup were Suga Super Mega Baseball 4 for Q1 of fiscal year, F123 for Q1 of the fiscal year, Immortals of Avium for Q2 of the fiscal year, May, 20, uh, May 24, sorry, Madden, 24 q2 fiscal year ea sports football club of course they're uh fifa games so they cannot use the license anymore q2 for the fiscal year and nhl 24 q3 for the fiscal year so it looks like we still are not getting this game it is they're just going to be sitting on it i'm assuming they're still trying to figure out the i mean as far as we understand it's playable front to back if the gameplay that leaked footage is still true it is barely a dragon age in everything but the name or anything but the name uh, but it seems to be that they are still unsure on how this game's gonna come out and what the final form is because of course they did just have a recent hire of a um, longtime ex bioware producer on their consulting for the game we'll see i i become more and more nervous every time i hear about Dragon Age Dreadwolf as a huge Dragon Age fan. Every time I hear about it, my nerves get tense every time. Zelda Tears of the Kingdom reviews are out, and unsurprisingly, the game has been reviewed extremely well. So well, it is the highest rated game ever on Open Critic, a popular review aggregator. No one's shocked, I feel like. Nintendo doesn't usually release uh, anything close to bad games. I am in the early hours of the game enjoying myself. I'll talk about it a little bit more later in the show when we get to what you've been playing, but uh, it's Zelda. If you like Zelda, you're going to love this. And go, of course, go check out uh, any reviews that you'd want on your favorite review sites. Pixel Opus, known for the 2019 Concrete Genie, announced via Twitter that they will be closing their doors permanently with the following quote. Quote, Dear friends, our Pixel Opus adventure has come to an end. 
As we look to new futures, we want to say a heartfelt thank you to the millions of passionate players who have supported us in our mission to make beautiful, imaginative games with heart. We are so grateful. End quote. Established in 2014, they released two titles. The rhythm game Entwined, that launched for PS4 on June 19th, 2014, which later launched on PS3 and Vita on July 22nd, 2014, and the second much larger and more substantial release of Concrete Genie, which launched for PlayStation 4 on October 8th, 2019. Sean Layden, ex-chairman of SIE Worldwide Studios, wrote the following on Twitter, quote, not going to lie, this is a deep cut. So loved working with this team and watching them level up to deliver the genre-busting Concrete Genie, all while maintaining a culture of support, inclusion, and challenge. Now a new adventure awaits, only very best to every team member. End quote. I don't really have much to say here. Um, they only re were able to really get two games out there, and they were developing a PS5 title in collaboration with Sony Animations. I'm assuming that got uh, canceled and they couldn't keep going. Uh, they probably were low on money or investments who knows but it's incredibly sad to hear as anytime anyone loses their job of course it's sad hopefully everyone lands on their feet it is sad to see because they were at least doing things differently i like entwined i have not played concrete treaty but i heard it was very good so it's sad to see them go switching over to vgc this one i'm going to read from the actual article by andy robinson capcom sold more game in its last fiscal year than any other in its history Quote, in its end-year uh, uh, financial results published on Wednesday, which cover the year, ended March 31st, 2023, the Resident Evil publisher said it sold 41.7 million games during the 12-month period. That's up from 3.3, uh, sorry, that's up from 32.6 million games the previous fiscal year and breaks its records for the most games sold in a business year. The company said its games helped to achieve a sixth consecutive year of record high profits, quote, at all levels, end quote, and its 10th consecutive year of operating income growth. The company achieved the record sales figure partly with the release of two new titles in its flagship series. Resident Evil 4 was released a week before the end of the reporting year and uh, period in March 2023, and Monster Hunter Rise Sunbreak, which sold around 3.75 million, and 5.45 million units. However, the vast majority of its sales came from the catalog titles, which Catcom defines as games released in the previous fiscal year or earlier. These sales, which it says, were mostly made up of titles in the Monster Hunter Resident Evil and Devil May Cry series, reached 29.3 million units, exceeding the 24 million units in the previous fiscal year. Catcom said 12.4 million in sales was made up of new titles, very impressive, the company released 35 new SKUs in fiscal year 23, including Mega Man Battle Network Legacy Collection, Resident Evil Village Gold Edition, Monster Hunter Rise Deluxe Edition, Capcom Arcane Second Stadium, and Capcom Fighting Collection. 89.4% of its game sales during 12 months were digital. 89.4% of its game's sales during the 12 months were digital. That is insane. 37.3 million. And 19.7 were sold in its native Japan, uh, around the 8.2 million mark. Other than Monster Hunter Rise, Sunbreak, and Resident Evil 4, the company's top-selling titles during the physical year were Monster Hunter Rise 3.7, Resident Evil 2 2.25, and Resident Evil 3 1.95. Following the publication of its end-year results, Capcom shares price hit an all-time high on Wednesday. Company, uh, the company's stock hit... 5,270 yen, which is about $38.97. On the Tokyo Stock Exchange earlier today, this time 10 years ago, it had a share price of 390 yen, which is $2.92 this time 10 years ago. Capcom sends its experts to break records, says it expects to break records for sales and profit again in its current fiscal year ending March 31st, 2024, which includes the release of Street Fighter VI in June and new IP Exo Primal in July. And of course, this is a reminder, uh, Capcom seeks to sell 10 million uh, Street Fighter VI, so they're very strong. They came back from a very weak period, like they said 10 years ago, uh, with their release. Uh, poof, what were they releasing 10 years ago? 10 years ago would have been around... More, more of a kind of... Let, you know, let's have some fun here. We're... We're, we're having a nice uh, Friday. I hope you are, too. Let's look up Capcom's releases, and let's go back 10 years 
and let's compare them today. We just went over everything that sold this year, right? They had the recent-ish release of, of course, Devil May Cry 5, Resident Evil 2, 3, 4, remasters, and all these things. So let's see what they released uh, 10 years ago and compare it to today. Because, of course, remember, it was $2. Now it is $38 stock price. That is an incredible, incredible uh, difference. Let's see here. Let's go to... Capcom, oh, you know what? Here, let's get more. Capcom releases by year. Let's go there. Uh, let's go there. Sorry about this, but I do really want to do this. Let's go down. Let's go to 2013. All right, so the re uh, of course, 2013, the launch of Xbox One and PS4. Of course, they released Dead Rising 3 that year, Street Fighter X All Capcom, which I believe was only in Japan. Oh, no, that was an iPhone, iPad, and Android game. That's right. Uh, Monster Hunter Frontier, Fassy, uh, oh, Biohazard 5. That that was also I iPhone. That, mean, that, that, is a res that means it's Resident Evil, but um, in Japan, that, uh, they were called the Biohazard. Lost Planet 3. DuckTales Remastered, Phoenix Drive, Ace Attorney, Dragon's Dogma Quest, which was also a Japanese game that launched um, on mobile. Line Drop, Monster Hunter Frontier, again, another Japanese title for 360 and PC, uh, Strider the following year uh, in February 2014. So a big, 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 big difference in terms of quality. Cross beats, a lot of mobile games, a lot of like kind of nonsense. They were trying to probably capture the Japan mobile market and it probably just never worked out. Uh, here's a couple more. D Dungeon and Dragons Chronicle of Mysteria. Remember me. I forgot about that game. I forgot they published it after uh, a PlayStation dropped it like a hot potato. I remember they were pushing that very highly uh, leading up to the release PlayStation was and then they quickly dropped it probably realizing how much of a uh, disaster the game was um i don't even i don't yeah i never played that game I, I almost wish i did dragon's dogma is probably the biggest release they had but that, i don't believe that sold well it was just like uh hi, uh oh no this is a re no no sorry this is dragon's dogma dark arisen so this is the re-release of dragon's dogma which they um uh combined it with the dlc dark arisen that's right Couple more Dark Stalkers Resurrection, Capcom Arcade Cabinet. Uh, this is when they released the DMC um, reboot that no one liked. I, I kind of liked it. it. It it's not as Devil May Cry, which I didn't know at the time because I didn't really play the games. I only played Devil May Cry Four at the time, so I didn't really mind it too much. But upon playing Devil May Cry Five, I do understand like okay, that makes sense why people didn't really like DMC. Although, like I said, I liked it fine. And that's the difference between this 10-year period. That is a huge, 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 huge uh, quality increase, I would say, right? It's almost not even close uh, when you compare what uh, what has come out now versus what came out 10 years ago. They're just on another level. They have the recent release of Exoprimal, which not a good uh, thing to bring up when you're in terms of quality, but, you know, Street Fighter Six, Resident Evil 4, like we were talking about. Uh, and then uh, they're trying to make reverse work. It's not working, but fun exercise nonetheless. You can see why they are on the uphead. Something changed in the waters, and it's glad to see because a good Capcom is nice to nice to see. This is a quick one over on Twitter. Jeff Healy writes the following, and here we go. More than forty partners set to take part in Summer Games Fest activities. Uh, you can sign up for event alerts at summergamesfest.com. Join us for our live showcase event at the YouTube Theater on June 8th. And then public uh, tickets are on sale. I believe you can find that through their official website. And they have a full list of all of their 2023 partners. I'm going to go ahead and uh, say a couple that jump out at me. Um, Activision, Amazon Games, Annapurna Interactive, Bandai Namco, Capcom, CG Project Red, Devolver, Devolver Digital, uh, Disney, EA, Epic Games, Focus Entertainment, Gearbox. Let's see who else do I see. Hoyoverse, which is, uh, I believe, the people who make... Should be the people who make Genshin Impact. Let's double check on that. Hoyoverse. I believe they're the Chinese developer. Hoyoverse, Hoyoverse, Hoyoverse. Let's see here. Yes, Genshin Impact. And I'm almost positive they are a Chinese developer. Uh, Kabam, um, 
Larian Studios, which is um, Boulder's Gate, I believe. Uh, Level Infinite, which is, of course, Tencent in disguise, because they don't want you to know it's Tencent. Magic the Gathering, Netflix, Nexon, Niantic, uh, North Beach. Let's see who else. Play on. Eh. PlayStation. Big old PlayStation. Simple. Not even just PlayStation. It has just the, the famous PS logo. Love it. Uh, Sega, Square Enix, Steam, Ubisoft, Warner Brothers, Xbox. So, set up for a very, very fun Summer's Game Fest, when you read everything out, let's hope it's a bit more put together this year, as I feel like the last few years, it was kind of messy. It was a little messy. So let's hope they have a more... How, how can I put this? Like, put together Summer Games Fest. Because I feel like one, uh, in the recent years, they, like one thing would happen one week, and it never really felt like anything was actually happening in these, quote, Summer Games Fest. It would you would really uh, do opening night live, and then you would catch opening night live in the way it ends. You know the two main shows that he did at the beginning and end. That's really all all I watched, with like a couple things spread throughout that that never really caught anyone's eye. Let's see if uh, this is maybe more rounded out. We'll have to we'll have to see. Always, I'm of course tuning in. Now, of course, this is where we talk about what have you been playing. This is of course a question I ask. To you at home what have you been playing is there a specific game podcast or something you've been listening to remember let me know in the comments below we can have a good conversation right now i will quickly go over star wars jedi uh, uh fallen sorry jedi survivor i always get that confused if i keep saying jedi fallen survivor but it's not that's not what it's called i uh, loved it beat the game i wish it worked well <laughs> like i wish i wish i could recommend this there's really just no unless you have fomo or you really just do not want to wait there's no reason to buy this right now. Wait for a couple patches. This game's going to be much better in most likely about a month, a month or two. It's also going to be cheaper. So there really is no reason to wait on this game uh, for the regular person who doesn't want to buy every game that comes out or something. Just wait for a sale. If you see a good price, I mean, this is an amazing $40 game, $50 game. You have no reason to pay full price for this game that at times doesn't work well uh the frame rate was atrocious i actually turned it to performance mode or not performance i'm sorry i had performance mode almost the entire game switched it off of that uh so i could at least have a more consistent frame rate on a specific um uh, hub the, like the hub area like the main area you keep going back to so i could just have more consistent frame rate because it was constantly dipping and it was starting to hurt my eyes so i just completely turned it off and uh, was a shame, but I, I turned it back on when I whenever I could, whenever I had an excuse, threw it back on because it's much better everywhere else. It's specifically that main area that I had the biggest problem. Uh, aside from that, I I didn't actually have that many bugs, although I did hear a lot of people were having bugs, especially PC. PC's a, a a wasteland right now for new releases, but I didn't have that many bugs. I got kind of lucky. I feel like I really only had the the frame rate bug. I had a couple visual bugs with like cloth things like cluttering when i would like meditate but aside from that nothing too bad that's really it i'm surprised i got that lucky it was just the framer it was really bad and there was some stuttering and uh when i went down elevators his like model shadow around him would like go up with the elevator it was very weird it's hard to describe but uh aside from those few things i, I actually got, i feel like i got really lucky with this title other than that, I haven't really been playing too, too much because it was really just Star Wars. And then I kind of uh, hung out until uh, Zelda came out. So Zelda's out now. Like I said, I'm just started playing it so far. It's Zelda. I love the opening. I will not spoil it here. I won't even talk about it. But the opening was very, very good. I liked what they're doing with certain things that I'm like, okay, maybe this will address one of my main criticisms from the first game. Who knows? We'll have to see. But right now, having a blast. Can't wait. I actually wish I was playing it right now, if, uh, being perfectly honest. <laughs> but that's, of course, what I have been playing. What have you been playing? Let me know. Rumor Roundup. Yesterday, as of recording, Ed Boon, the co-creator of the legendary gaming franchise Mortal Kombat, tweeted a short clip of a clock ticking from the number 9 to the number 10 to the number 11, and then skipping number 12, going straight to 1. Now, if you have played the latest entry in the series, of course, this being Mortal Kombat, this is not much of a surprise. 
Uh, but still fun to see and speculate nonetheless. Of course, this is haphazardly announcing a reboot of the franchise because, uh, of course, it skipped the number 12 and went straight to 1. And we have much more details from a leak, a tweet, a Twitter leakster known as Bill Bilkoon <laughs> confirmed its reboot later, confirmed by Windows Central, and it will be called Mortal Kombat 1. Set to release on Series S and X, PS5, Switch, and PC, the leaker also had pricing and additions. The standard edition will be $69.99 or $59.99 on Switch. The premium will be $109.99, and the collectors will be $249.99 on, of course, your respective platforms. It will be targeting a September 2023 launch window. Uh, Windows Central also confirms in the article that the character pass may feature multiple WB properties like Peacemaker and maybe Homelander. Insider Gaming. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm already reading to the next story. I apologize. Uh, but that was it from the Mortal Kombat thing. It's very cool. I mean, not shocking that Mortal Kombat's coming back. Uh, also, if you, uh, I saw a lot of people surprised about the reboot. That means you didn't play the last game. Uh, it's very obvious what they're doing when they when you beat the last game. 100%. I understand where they're going with this. Very excited to see where it goes from here because it's uh, like a fresh start with certain things changed. So I'm very excited. I can't wait to for this to come out, honestly, because I did really actually get very invested in the story of Mortal Kombat. I remember when um, 11 came out, I went back and beat 9 and 10 to be ready for for 11. I, I, that should be right. Something like that. Can't wait. I have nothing really else to add. Insider Gaming is yet again in the news with a pretty big report on the upcoming Call of Duty game set to come out this year with an official title and key dates for the game. Originally reported exist, uh, the existence, I guess is better written, originally reported by Jason Schreier. As a reminder, it was said that Call of Duty 2023 was going to be a smaller title compared to other releases and would expand upon the story of Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2. More of a DLC launch than a full um, title launch. Now that was well, true, but Tom Henderson has found out it has changed to be a full sequel title called Mortal Warfare 3. Los Alamos is the Battle Royale map from the series, and there will be a Zombies mode that works very much like an Outbreak 2.0. The key deets mentioned previously were the following. The beta weekend, for uh, the first beta weekend will be PS4 and PS5 exclusive October 6th through the 10th. Beta weekend 2 which will be for all systems that it's launching on, will be October 12th to the 16th. Campaign early access for all uh, con uh, all systems that it's releasing on will be available November 2nd, 2023. Full release will be PS4 uh, and PS5, Xbox One, Series S and X, PC for everything, November 10th, 2023. And then the Season 1 launch will be later on with a new Warzone map will be December 5th, 2023. Excited? New Call of Duty. I like the story of Modern Warfare 2. I don't know if that's contentious. I'm excited that they're going to Modern Warfare 3. And I could have taken the, the year break so they can really iron this out. I am worried that this is not a full title release, but they're just calling it that. We'll have to see. Aside from that, I don't really have too much to add. I, I'm not one of the Call of Duty haters, right? I understand why you would, like, you are just tired of the game. I get it. But I liked Modern Warfare 1 and 2, so I'm excited for the third one. I don't think I really have too, too much else to add. This is a pretty big leak if all this becomes true. I find, But I am excited for the next story, so let's move on. PlayStation Showcase 2023 will air the week of May 25th, according to Jeff Grubb, reliable source. He states it could... Uh, occur earlier than that week according to a report from vgc says with people with knowledge of sie's plans at the end of may or in early june andy robinson says the showcase will feature new content from konami so we got various reports here right so we start with jeff grubb stating yeah the playstation should uh happen the week of may 25th it could happen earlier and he did state like i didn't want to say the may 21st the week of May 21st, and then people be mad that it, when it doesn't happen on a Sunday, pretty much. So he was like being more broad that at some point before this, there will be that big showcase that we've all been waiting for for like seven, eight months now uh, because Sony has been very quiet. And then uh, let's go back to VGC. According uh, with report, they are also confirming that they have plans at the end of May or in early July. Not Nothing too much, but they're pretty much saying like their sources are saying somewhere between the end and early July or early June, there will be something. And then Andy Robinson going on to say that he is confirming that new content from Konami 
will be shown there, which isn't surprising as we did hear that uh, there are rumors circling around that PlayStation was able to uh, get an exclusive on Konami with new releases in both Castlevania and the Metal Gear Solid 3 remake that has been rumored for forever. If that is true, and it seems to be passing out to be so, that is a ginormous blow to Xbox. If they could not get them before Sony did, and they were able to get both exclusive, that is a big shot across the bow. Oh, I mean, that's rough. That's rough. Especially with all the other shots they've been getting. There's This is another shot to the chest to xbox which is hard to see especially as an xbox fan i own all three things so at the end of the day i don't very much care but you can't be at xbox third-party publishing or in charge of uh exclusive deals and not be like oh my god we missed that of course they have japanese ties with konami uh sony does so not shocking but surprising nonetheless Let's start the actual show for the week. Game Freak, a name synonymous with Pokemon for a very long time, announced quite a bit of a departure that would be published by Take-Two's private division, codenamed Bloom. Windows Satchel writes about the following. In an official statement, Game Freak director Kota Furishima, Furishima, yeah, talked about the, sorry, talked about how this partnership came to be and what players can expect from Project Bloom. Quote, we're thrilled to have the opportunity to create new IP that is bold and tonally different from our prior work. From the beginning, Private Division was the publisher we wanted to work with on our new game. Their track record and global expertise give us all confidence to create a sweeping new action-adventure game that we can't wait to share more about in the future. End quote. Pretty much just an announcement of an announcement, right? Almost, right? They're pretty much saying, like, hey, we're working with Take Two's private division, and we're gonna make a samurai game. I'm all for that. Very excited. Interesting that Game Freak seems to want to branch out a little bit, right? They've been saddled with Pokemon. They've made some other things. Hold on, let's do Game Freak releases. I feel like they've departed before. Let's see here. I mean, when they were made, they made a game called Quinty. That doesn't count. Let's let's scroll down here. So, yeah, so they made um this year on mobile, uh, pocket card jockey ride on. Uh, okay, uh, Little Town Hero. That's what I'm thinking of. That this was a digital game. Uh, it was retailed in America though. Little Town Hero, Giga Wrecker, old. So, so this seems like a bigger game because a lot of them are just kind of random 3ds ios games uh pocket card junk jockey again in 2013 uh but of course they're much much known for their pokemon series back in 2012 they made a game called harmonite a rhythm platformer so they've branched out a few times before this isn't incredibly uncommon to see but this might be the first one that they're really trying for a greater appeal other than more games geared towards a more childish nature maybe they'll go for uh, something more broad and, and and actually try to really push the envelopes of what they can create we'll have to see it seems play on formerly coke media will be merging some of their studios according to games and shop biz as they have obtained slides from an internal presentation the affected studios deep silver prime matter and raven's corpse will all be cons cons consolidated into the play on brand this is not an immediate change and it could take up to a year says a re representative of play on speaking to games and shop is according to sources at gamatsu the aim is to produce fewer titles at a higher quality now if you do not remember some of these studios let's name off a couple titles that they're gonna that they have released deep silver deep silver of course known for releasing dead island 2 and saints row and chorus and these are all publishing by the way uh prime matter echo uh their up t upcoming titles were echoes of the end painkiller payday 3 system shock they've released scars above gungrave gore the chant and the last or career raven's court they have an upcoming title called kona 2 proto corgi and they've released uh two titles uh prior road 96 and the road 96 mile zero 
yeah, I mean, they're going to consolidate them probably to make them more through line. I will definitely take less titles, but with a higher quality. I played none of these games, pretty much. I started Dead Island 2, and I started Saints Row, and I immediately jumped out of both of them. So, that's all I really have to say about that. I just want to report on that because it was relevant. Uh, interesting, I hope that they will actually start making good games. Uh, not to denigrate every game that was just listed, but like I would 100% take half of all you've released, just cut all that in half, and have all those games be double. Uh, not double their score on Metacritic, but like double in terms of quality. Of course, that's not how it works, and that's easier said than done, but we'll have to see. PlayStation has announced the India Hero Project which, according to Gamatsu, is an offshoot of the PlayStation China Hero Project. China Hero Project has supported many games for developers in China that, of course, aims to bring more projects from Chinese developers to the PlayStation ecosystem, which, of course, means that the India Hero Project seeks to do the same. The SIE the SIE blog post writes the following, quote, As part of our evolving journey to ensure that PlayStation remains the best place to play, we're committed to developing regional incubator programs capable of identifying new and diverse developers worldwide. This is from Sony Interactive Entertainment India Market Strategist Director. It's quite the name there. Radhika Thakir, Thakir said in an SIE blog post. Quote, The India Hero Project is fueled by the commitment on our behalf of the Indian gaming market. Through mentorship, training, and project-based investment, PlayStation strives to lower the barrier of entry and showcase the most incredible talents emerging from India. We're pleased to announce the new initiative and our call for submissions. End quote. Very cool. Always there to help maybe people that aren't able to cross the hurdle and releasing their game and push them along that barrier. Uh, as there, I'm sure, is a lot of untapped talent in India as it is the second, if I remember correctly, that is the second most populated country in the world. But I believe. Uh, I very excited for this. That's all I have to say. As reported by IGN's Rebecca Valentine, we heard the CEO of EA Andrew Wilson give his thoughts on AI after being asked about it in an earnings call for Q4. Quote The fear of displacement of the workforce is something we read a lot about and we talk a lot about. As we think about every revolution over time, from the agricultural revolution to the industrial revolution and on. There has been displacement of the workforce in the near term and then meaningful increase in workforce opportunities over the long term. Our hope is that AI represents the same opportunity and we're working very closely inside of our company to ensure that our people benefit in that way and actually facilitate them to do more things, end quote. After that, Wilson tossed it to the COO, Laura Milil. Milil? Mil, who said this. Quote, so in game development, you would imagine the velocity of content creative iteration is going to be advantaged greatly by having really smart content tools. Andrew mentioned creator content, lifelike animation, real time text of sheets for players and what will mean for them and the experience they have. As we think about live game support at scale, there's going to be some really great imagery detection, issue detection, economic modeling that we're going to be able to apply so we continue to grow these connected ecosystems. So we're pretty optimistic and excited and inspired about this new wave of AI, end quote. So when you talk about AI, it's always uh, complicated, right? Because you could be talking about a number of things. You could be talking about AI making a game from the ground up and you doing the rest. You could be talking about AI just making the script work. You could be talking about AIs just generating NPCs. You could be talking about AIs just generating NPC conversations, blah, 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 blah. So when you just say boldly, our hope is that AI represents the same opportunity. It just is unclear which one are you talking about? Are you talking about AI for the entirety of your thing? Because if it continues on, you could have an AI so strong that you could just make a game. In theory. So is that going to happen? Is that what you're saying you're excited about? Are you excited about foundations? Who knows? I would imagine these two people are very smart. But we have to remember that at the end of the day, they're there for the bottom line. So I'm sure someone worried about the bottom line 
would be very, very excited about the potential of replacing jobs with a thing that they don't have to pay for. We'll have to see. I don't have too much more to add other than the promise of AI is something both incredibly amazing and incredibly terrifying as AI could be trained eventually, maybe, to do a number of things. Maybe even make the whole game and you won't be needed anymore. Or maybe make a building blocks. Maybe that'll make their jobs easier. Maybe it'll make some of their jobs obsolete. We really don't know. It just depends on how fast these things develop. I am very worried in the long term. In the near term, I don't think we have too, too much to worry about right now in the terms of the greater the greater gaming sphere of creation and creativity in the near term, but in the long term, I'm very worried. And that is something that we'll have to very much think about. I am very much in support of the writer strike as of right now, because that is very wise of them to say, Hey, we don't want AIs taking our jobs. We don't want AIs being generated in even to make our jobs easier. I know we, we are cutting it off now. They refused, so they went on strike. I respect that. I, I, If I had that power, I definitely would too. I, My job is not going to be replaced by a, a chat GPT. I respect it. I would be right there with them if my job was that much threatened. Very wise of them, I think. According to VGC, Tom Ivan writes about CG Project Red. Has gone back to the drawing board, even going as far as writing off some of the costs of expenses in a regulatory announcement. They detailed that they told investors it had an impairment allowance related to expenses incurred during development. It said that the value of the expenses incurred totaled $33.4 million um, PLN, uh, which is $7.6 million in USD in 2022, and $9.5 million PLN, of course, $2.2 million the first two months of 2023 an update on thursday cg product said it is now set a new direction for the project and revised the above figures so they wrote off some and they're pretty much going back to the drawing board with of course molasses fud this is the witcher game that they're creating that they said will be new and in, like new and different not much here i they pretty much dumped the project i'm curious why or what motivated them to i'm, I'm curious if they had like some building blocks but it just didn't work out or maybe they had a leave in the team who knows we'll know more later on so i wanted to read this this is from ign starfield's esrb rating has been revealed. uh i wanted to talk a little bit but this, this is andy uh, adam bankhurst i want to talk a little bit about this there are light, and I mean light spoilers for Starfield. Go ahead and um, use the timestamps if you would like to skip ahead. And when I mean light spoilers, it is incredibly light. I'm, I'm just reading like the beginning text of the game. So not the beginning text on the game. I'm sorry. The like, so not like the description of the game, like what, like, like just like open world role playing game. It's like stuff like that. So don't don't be too worried. I would not spoil the game for you. Uh, but it was just very funny with a very specific quote. Uh, quote. The so uh, let's actually read read this. So of course the SRB they rate the games M rated. Of course this is M rated, uh, fully expected uh, specifically because of Fallout three and four same makers. First off, it confirms Starfield is an quote open world role playing game in which players assume the role of a miner tasked with finding artifacts across the galaxy. End quote. The next bit of test describes some more standard features, including that Starfield allows for first and third person perspectives, and that it will feature character interactions, quests, future guns, lasers, axes, and explosions. The rating summary gives some examples of the, of, quote, suggestive material in the dialogue, end quote. Players were found in the game specifically that they share a bed with another character. Quote, the game contains some suggestive material in the dialogue. After sharing a bed with characters, ergo, life is a sexually transmitted disease that's 100% fatal. I'm all for getting a little while, but next time let's try it without the jetpacks. And talking about seeing stars, whew, that was amazing, the summary reads. We obviously don't have full context of what may not be exactly as it sounds, or even appear in the game, beyond a mention, but next-gen jetpack sex is probably not something many had on their Starfield bingo cards. Very hilarious. That almost sounds like maybe prostitutes or something? Because it, it says you lay in the bed and there's nothing that happens, so you probably just literally lay in a bed and it just cuts to the next day and just says whatever those dialogues say. Oh, oh, and it also confirmed in-game purchases. Not too sorry. And there will be, of course, drugs. Um, in-game purchases most likely have something to do with cosmetics. I imagine there's nothing that you'll buy. Maybe there's a gun. I don't know. It's a single-bullet game. So maybe you'll get, like, a cool gun similar to um, 
Assassin's Creed like Valhalla and Odyssey where like you could like buy like a really cool weapon for like five bucks or something and you'd like have like a slightly OP weapon. Very excited for Starfield. It is now literally make it or break for Xbox's year. So if they're worth the stuff, let's hope this game's good. Uh, Xbox has completely almost destroyed all goodwill that they have. So like, let's just see if this game's good, finally. Date updates. Goodbye Volcano High has been delayed to August 29th. Hollow Knight Sook Song delayed past June 2023. Street Fighter VI has an open beta announced for May 19th to the May 21st. Devolver Digital has announced a showcase for June. Not a, a date given. They just announced a date for June. And then I saw this. Announced for Fall 22. The Agatha Christie's Murder on the Orient Express comes to all relevant platforms. This is due out Fall of this year. <laughs> I saw that and I was like, I have to read that. This is hilarious. They're doing an Agatha Christie game. So let's read off some of the PlayStation Plus Extra and Premium games. So th this first one is just extra. So if you pay for a PlayStation Plus Extra, you will be able to stream these games. Ratchet and Clank Rift Apart for PS5, Humanity, PS4, PS5, Watch Dogs Legion, PS4, PS5, Dishonored 2, only for PS4, but of course, um, you can play that on your PS5, but it's the PS4 title. Dishonored Death of the Outsiders, PS4, Sukuna of Rice and Ruin, PS4, Tomb Raider Definitive Edition, PS4, Rise of the Tomb Raider 20 Year Celebration, PS4, Shadow of the Tomb Raider, PS4, Bus, Bus Simulator 21 Next Stop, PS4, PS5, Evil Within 2, PS4, Wolfenstein Young Blood, PS4, Thymesia, PS5, Rain World, PS4, Lake, PS4, PS5, Conan Exiles, PS4, Rune Factory 4 Special, PS4, Store of Seasons, Friends of Min Mineral Town, PS4, Soundfall, PS4, PS5. Very cool. Remember, if I said just PS4, it is a PS4 game, but you can, of course, play it on your PS5. If it's just PS5, of course, you cannot play it on your PS4. Um, and there is a note, Story of Seasons, Friends of Minier Town, plus Expansion Pass set will be available to download. And the best base game, Story of Seasons, Friends of Minier Town, will be available to stream. Just so you know. These are the PlayStation Plus Premium Classics. Of course, you have to be paying for Premium to be able to play any of the games that I'm about to list. Siphon Filter, Logan Shadow, PS4, PS5, Blade Danger, Lineage of Light, PS4, PS5, Pursuit Force, PS4, PS5, Ghostbusters, the video game remastered for PS4. And that is your PlayStation Plus Extra and Premium titles for the month of May. And that's the show for the week. Let's talk about what's queued up. This, of course, can be a game, a podcast, a TV show, a movie. Anything. Manga, comic book, book, audiobook. So what do you have queued up? This is, of course, a question that I ask yourself, and then I will answer. Let me know what you have queued up for the weekend. I'm pretty sure I can guess most of you, if not all of you, are going to be playing Legend of Zelda Tears of the Kingdom. If you have access to a Switch, I will, of course, be almost exclusively playing that with a side of maybe some Marvel Sap. And maybe if someone needs help in Destiny or something, I'll jump on there. But Legend of Zelda Tears of the Kingdom all the way through, I'll be playing that exclusively. And I'm very excited to get back to it tonight after I'm done with some work. And that's it. I don't really have too much else to queue up. Um, we watched Guardians of the Galaxy. Make sure to go check that out. Oh, uh, I did a uh, review with Penultimate Conquest, a very fun video. Very great guys, and they do some good content over there, so you can go check out Penultimate Conquest on YouTube or your favorite podcast service. Very good channel I love. Um, it's part of their Marvel Mondays, I believe. Uh, or MCU Mondays? That might have been. It's one of those things. But it was very fun. I got to rank... Uh, the Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3 on their list. And I got to, uh, and they asked me really uh, five fun questions about my favorite Marvel movies, my moments, my favorite characters, villains, etc. Very cool. It's very fun. Uh, and aside from that, that is all I have for you this week. I had a blast in 43 minutes. It's not, oh, not quick. That's about, if I'm solo, that's about the time that we go for. So. I want to thank everyone for listening this far. Remember, you can like, comment, subscribe. You know what to do. I don't need to bore you with all the YouTube things. Remember, five-star review. That does actually help a lot on the podcast services. So if you have some time, please do that. But you listening is plenty for me. So don't feel compelled to really do any of that. I really appreciate everyone out there. Thank you so much. Go play your favorite game. And remember, go Chief.